going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So today is Thursday. Hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are. But seriously, how does that guy just drive over that little kid's toy like that? Like you really didn't see that airplane? Come on, man. That's not right. It's not right. But um, yeah, so that's probably it for the Bitcoin SV jokes. It's been four days. I think we kind of played it out. It's time to focus on the rest of the market right now. And as we can see, the markets are looking quite healthy, doing quite well. In fact, we're up to $178.7 billion market cap. Now we had reached, uh, it was like 181, 182 when we had that kind of fake out bump. So this is really good news. Bitcoin dominance still sitting around 52%. Ethereum is actually up uh, 3% today. And I'm gonna talk about Ethereum a little bit. A lot of people are getting excited over that. Um, but if we do look at the biggest gainers today, Augur is up 14%. Binance is up 11%. Basic Attention, Tezos, Maker, Huobi, KuCoin, and Factum. In fact, actually, a lot of these coins are up today, guys. So it's a pretty good day in the markets. Now, Augur, they had the announcement that came out from Coinbase. They're getting launched on the app. A lot of people pumped about that. Binance also, they were hinting at their, you know, the Genesis block, basically the Binance chain, the DEX. We'll also talk about that as well, but that does explain why those are doing, you know, they're the two best performers on the top page today. Now, talking about what is going on in Bitcoin land, even though we've had an overall drop in volume since we had that pump, recently the volume has started to go up again, which is good, right? So we are still maintaining on this trend line. We, we still are holding above that psychological $5,000 level and even though this 5,100 line has acted more of resistance than support, we are still above that as well. So as we get closer and closer to the close of this wedge, we'll definitely be keeping our eyes on this moving forward, right? But I wanted to actually shift our focus to Ethereum today, which I don't usually talk about, but a lot of people are getting excited because we were looking at the Bitcoin chart and we were anticipating the golden cross but it hasn't happened yet. Whereas on Ethereum, we're pretty much experiencing that right now. So you can see right here, we have the 50 uh, moving above the, about, well, it looks like it's about to clearly move above the 200 uh, day moving average. So this is considered a very uh, bullish signal. And you have seen, even though volume um, has fallen off a little bit over the past course of the few days, you see the overall average of it is increasing. So that is something to just, just note, just keep an eye on it, guys, because the other thing, too, is you can see that the Ethereum longs on Bitfinex have actually been going up, okay, the past couple days, whereas if we switch over to the shorts, they're pretty much at an all-time low right now, well, almost, okay? So that signals to me that people are definitely getting extremely bullish on Ethereum, okay? And we're going to talk more about this later. I have a lot of different fundamentals, a lot of things going on in the background, all these enterprises and, and OTC markets are booming. I mean, guys, things are happening in the background, whether or not you see them, you know, on coin market cap, things are happening. Also, before we move on, this is totally off topic. What the heck happened to Waves yesterday? What was this? Did you guys see this? Look, it dropped practically, literally almost to zero. And I know that like technically coins can't go to zero, but wow, was that a fat finger trade or what? Do you guys remember when Ethereum did that? When Ethereum fell from like, uh, what was it? 300 to like 10 cents. Actually, I do have this guy's, uh, let, me, let me pull this up. This is uh, Disrupt Vegas actually. Uh, he recorded this, check this out. You guys ever seen this? Watch. Wow. 10 cents. Did you guys see that? That was crazy. I actually saw that live. I remember, you know, because I was looking at my phone. That was when I was like really obsessed. I would just refresh prices like every five seconds. You know how that goes. And uh, yeah, that was incredible. So that, that could have been what happened with Waves, just throwing that out there. But man, if anybody uh, scooped it up down here, congratulations. Actually, ever since that Ethereum thing where it did that, now like you hear people, they just put in buy orders for like, like really stupid low prices. Like they'll put in a buy order for Ethereum for like, I don't know, $5, you know, just in case, you know, you never know, you know, ever since that day. So that was pretty funny moving forward, guys. Um, yeah. So getting back, obviously, I want to, I do want to keep talking about what's happening in the market. So you do have crypto fees. He's the one behind the market God indicator that we were using for a little bit on the channel. Haven't really been using it as much because honestly, if you're looking at it on a shorter time frame, it just flashes way too many signals and you'll literally just be buying and selling all day. Right. So, but I mean, it is a good indicator nonetheless. Now he says the two week MACD has crossed in a buy signal on Bitcoin. We opened at approximately 4k. The last time it happened was May, 2015 Bitcoin to open around 240, we can still drop in accumulation, but he says the bottom is in, folks. And as you can see right here, this is what he's referring to. Now, he says the last time that it had happened was back here, <clears throat> and I have it pulled up. 
on um, Trading View was uh, May 11th of 2015, right? So I have it marked here. But I do want to point out, guys, just because we might be having the same thing happen again doesn't mean that there may be a chance, like he said, to go a little lower. Because look, we had this little rally. So where was it right here? You figure it was at like 230 to two, like he said, 240, right? Um, and then we rallied up to here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Excuse me, guys. We came up to here. Uh, it was like 317 bucks, but then we actually fell down to 201, which was lower than this actual uh, indicator when it happened. So I just want to point that out. Like we may have one of those like kind of rallies and then a dump and then start going back up again, but don't freak out. I mean, it's all part of the volatility, right? Just be prepared for that. But guys, I know, I know I can hear you already. K-Dub, you're too bullish. You're too bullish. Crown would tell me I'm too bullish. So Fine, let's entertain some more realistic perspectives here, right? So how about this? Bitcoin bulls may have to wait 22 years for the cryptocurrency to return to its all-time high. Do you guys think it's going to take 22 years for Bitcoin to break 20K? Let me know, because I certainly don't. But I'll get into why in just a minute, but let's entertain it. So it says, despite the rally... The broader collapse of Bitcoin has largely followed the path of previous bubbles, according to data compiled by UBS analyst Kevin uh, Deninen. I don't know. I'll just call him Kevin. But anyway, look at this. So they're basically comparing Bitcoin to all these other bubbles. You know, you have NASDAQ, Dow Jones, oil, etc. right? But you really can't compare Bitcoin to these, but we'll get into that in just a second. So what do they go on to say? Well, Kevin says that crypto bulls will look at other bubbles to sort of, you know, base their assumptions on. So the argument here is that Bitcoin has gone through its bubble phase and it's ready to rise Phoenix-like from the ashes, just like other assets did in the past. However, those... Um, Waiting for crypto recovery may have to wait a long time. He says we're struck by how long it took other act, uh, asset bubbles to recover their peak levels as long as 22 years potentially for the Dow Jones Industrial and how uh, pedestrian the annualized returns from trial to recovery often are. You can also look in, they have some more charts down here as well. But I just want to point out, like, you're acting like Bitcoin has only had one bubble. Like, this is only, like, oh, why? Because we had the highest ever. But if you look at it, it wasn't even the worst correction we had had. I mean, I think at the peak, we were only down, like, what, 84%? Whereas we've seen others in the 90%, okay? I mean, if you want to look at this chart right here, you know, you could obviously see that, I mean, these are just historical corrections um, above 30%. Now, keep in mind, in traditional stocks, you're in a bear trend if you're down 20%. Bitcoin does that all the time, okay? So, I mean, yes, there were some that were bigger corrections than others, but we can break it down into all these different ones over here. I mean, look, 87%, um, yeah, 83%. There was definitely one that was more massive than this, but that might have been before it was really trading. I think it was really, really early on. But my point is, is that every single time you could see that Bitcoin has come back with a higher low and a higher high, okay? So I just wanted to point that out, guys. You can't really use that as statistics. And on top of that, um, realistically speaking, had you invested in Bitcoin at its you know, one of its earliest known moments, let's say maybe when it was first able to be exchanged or whatnot, it would still outperform any of the best performing stock IPOs. You know, you have Nike, if you had invested in the beginning, it would, you know, I don't know, it would, it would have brought back a lot. But the point is, guys, Bitcoin is clearly, clearly like not nothing that you can really relate to traditional assets because it's not really like anything we've ever seen before. It's a totally new concept, right? So I don't really agree with that. Look at that. I was able to turn something bearish into something bullish. How did I do that yet again? All right. Well, I'm just excited, but let's talk fundamentals here. Now, we did speak yesterday about how Binance had a very, very, very good Q4. Uh, they were up 66%. I'm sorry, Q1, they were up 66% from Q4 of last year. Well, now they're saying that there was a huge surge as well in the over-the-counter trading on Binance um, too. So you had CFO Wei Zhu said that um, OTC accompanied a volume uptick as Bitcoin rose almost $1,300. They said last month we saw a lot more volume than say three months ago. This was mainly due to an increase in Bitcoin um, price and altcoins over the past few months. And I told you guys this. I mean, obviously, what's going to get people interested? Price. Let's be honest. Like all of a sudden, Bitcoin, you know, went up, uh, you know, 1,300 bucks and suddenly everybody's calling you up again. All your friends are hitting you up like, hey, what's going on, man? You're still doing that Bitcoin thing, right? So they say this was mainly due to the increase in price, obviously, which increased demand. They said major investors' interest in crypto markets is driven 
uh, is driving developers to create even more diverse offerings to cater to their needs. A lot of people who historically worked for high frequency trading firms have actually made the jump from traditional equity and have launched new trading platforms in the crypto space, right? Now, if you want to just talk about more of this adoption, you have major finance and tech firms that are literally pouring their money into startups to help build the sector. So maybe it's not so much investing in the actual altcoins themselves, but they're investing in these projects to build out the ecosystem of the crypto space, right? You see venture capital investments in crypto and blockchain startups that include funds from corporate have raced to 850 million so far this year. This is uh, data that was compiled by PitchBook for Reuters. Um, yeah, look at this, man. Such bets by companies including London Stock Exchange Group, Microsoft Corp, spiked over fivefold to a record 2.4 billion over 117 investments in 2018. This suggests large companies see promise in this technology, right? So firms are looking at how and if blockchain and related technologies can be used in ways that could spark deeper change, right? Now, I also wanted to talk about, now this is another thing too. There is that interest in Ethereum, right? You know, Ethereum, we do know, it does have a lot of problems, right? And then Bitcoin it has a lot of issues. In fact, a lot of these cryptos have a lot of issues, right? But but Ethereum has had a lot of attention lately. One thing I want to point out, there was this article um, right here. It was called Blo uh, Blockchain's Billion Dollar Babies. And it came out on Forbes. And you can see it lists a whole bunch of companies over here. You know, you have uh, Aliens, Facebook, Fidelity, HTC, IBM. You guys can have a look at this. They go into all of it over here. But essentially, it was broken down. And in this Forbes article, it says that over 50% of Forbes billion dollar firms are working with Ethereum's blockchain, including several high profile technology firms, a few of them, which I just named, right? So you had the writer, Michael Del Castillo in the article, which was looking at the top 50 $1 billion, block, $1 billion blockchain companies or blockchain babies said that the market may be in a bit of a rut, but the underlying technical developments are growing rapidly, especially with established entities that are looking to leverage the strengths of blockchain. So you can see right here, according to International Data Corp, total corporate and government spending on blockchain should hit 2.9 billion this year, which is an increase of 89% over the previous year and reached 12.4 billion by 2022. So when PricewaterhouseCoopers surveyed 600 execs last year, 84% said that their companies are involved with blockchain. And on top of that, guys, 32 of the 50 companies revealed are building applications on top of Ethereum or platforms derived from it, while 24 of them said the companies are using Ethereum blockchain itself. So this is incredible news for not just Ethereum, but I think for the space in general, okay? This is the interest that I'm talking about, and the fact that you're even seeing guys like Ernst Young, okay? They're coming out, and it says in uh, four to six weeks, a blockchain product developed by, we can just call them EY for now, one of the big four professional service organizations will be made public domain, so they're calling this the EY. EY Ops Chain Public Edition, the technology uses zero knowledge proofs to give permissions to transaction information similar to Monero. So check it out right here. So you have uh, Paul Brody. He's the blockchain chief. He says the most effective um, way to maximize blockchain adoption is to release this work to the community as a true contribution with no strings attached. So like, check this out. I just uh, highlighted a few parts of the video right here. There's been an enormous amount of hype and excitement around blockchain technology, starting obviously with Bitcoin and financial services. But what we've seen more recently is much more focus around the enterprise. And in particular, this idea that enterprises can use blockchains to collaborate with each other and to merge both business and operational activity with the financial transfers that are involved with that activity. I also want to just scroll real quick to the end real quick. I just want to show you what he says right at the very end. Right here together. My goal for EY is that within the next year or two, we will be the largest blockchain software company on earth. And we will continue to be the leading auditor of blockchain based businesses around the world. So guys, as you can see, Ernst and Young are pretty pretty big guys. And the fact that they are like getting this crazy over blockchain saying that they want to be the leaders in the, in the arena. I mean, this just tells me that the interest is definitely, definitely booming guys. So let me get on to some quick coin news and let's get on out of here guys. Cause I don't want to drag this video on for too long. Let's rapid fire through the news. So obviously we do know the Binance debt, uh, Dex, 
is looking to, they're looking to have their main net swap on April 23rd. CZ said that they gave him the honor to do the first transaction on Binance chain. It's fast and sleek. So that's what you guys could be looking for. I know I said no more Bitcoin SV. I got one more thing and then that's it. So Calvin Air kind of responded to everything and he goes, imagine how the Catholic church would react to Jesus showing up today. That is how the high priest of the crypto world are reacting to Craig wanting to now prove in court that he is Satoshi. They are horrified about what he thinks of their stupid plans. Craig is Satoshi. Well, on top of that, did you just compare Craig Wright to Jesus Christ? We might be pushing it. We might be pushing it, guys. But it might not just be what's going on with the drama. It could be a lot worse for Bitcoin SV right now, guys. So if you check this out from Longhash, according to data from Blockchair, BSV miners earned $157,187 on January 1st, but they only earned about $98,124 on April 16th. This represents a decline of 37.5% in Bitcoin SV miner revenue. Is that an accurate statistic? Wow, that's pretty bad. Anyway, the decline in minor revenue has affected the BSV hash rate, uh, and it's declined to 699 petahashes per second, a decline of 28.4% in just two weeks. So by comparison, Bitcoin's estimated hash rate for April 16th was 47.37 exahashes per second. This means that it would only take 1.5% of Bitcoin's network hash rate to perform a sustained 51% attack on BSV. As of uh, yesterday. So yeah, pretty rough, guys. Pretty rough. But hey, for my XRP fans out there, XRP may soon get integrated into Skype, picking up access to 300 billion users for their XRP tip bot app to send messages to users. So there you guys go. Um, not really a big fan of Skype, going to be honest with you, but it's still an accomplishment. So there you guys go. And obviously that means XRP is clearly going to $300 before the end of the week. Just had to throw this out there. I love these crazy predictions. Crypto ran. I don't know if this is a joke or not. I hope this is a joke. It's literally impossible. Guys, it's just impossible. Like you could be the biggest XRP moon boy. It's not going to $300 by the end of the week. Or And if it does, the end of the week is only in a couple days. So in a couple days, we're going to $300. Crazy. But I think he's just having a good time. I think he's just having fun. Also, guys, the, um, oh, well, it was live. I don't know. Is it done? Oh, well, I would either that or they're taking a break or yeah, I don't know. Well, anyway, I was watching the, I had the IOHK Summit 2019 live stream. It was happening. Looks like they're either taking a break or they're done right now. But if you guys want to check it out, I'll drop that in the links below. You guys could check that out if you want to try to, you know, catch up on that. Also, I thought this was pretty interesting. Top 20 blockchain projects in terms of the activity on the blockchain. And this is uh, from ICO Analytics. So EOS is at the top, followed by Wax, BitShares, Tron, then Steam, then Bitcoin, Ethereum, Kin, Nano, Instar, Talos, Waves, Komodo, TE Food, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Dogecoin, Litecoin, and LTO Network. I was shocked to see they made it. Um, congratulations to those guys, though. And Dash at the bottom. But um, if you guys are interested in to see like the ways that the way that coins perform, there's a pretty cool thing. Uh, they posted it over on Reddit, but it's from Data Light, and it basically shows you a visualization of the top 20 crypto assets by market cap, uh, basically from you know the beginning, or at least since they were recording it up until now. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, the one thing you could take away from this is uh, it's ever changing. And the second, you know, it's, it's always moving, but, uh, yeah, Bitcoin maintains in uh, first position. So I don't know, guys, I don't know, but you can check that out. So before we go, I just want to talk about some cool adoption and things that are going on. And then that is it for us today, guys. So we have the governments of at least three countries have formally acknowledged their interest in issuing a sovereign Bitcoin bond to raise capital. So we got Afghanistan, Tunisia, and Uzbekistan. So for Afghanistan, it says a bond, a bond could be tied to metals, specifically the country's three trillion uh, lithium industry. Central Bank of Afghanistan governor said Bitcoin and Hyperledger's blockchain technology offers central banks an efficient tool to combat money laundering, manage remittances, fight cross-border terrorism, and limit gray economies. I agree with you on that. For Uzbekistan, meanwhile, a Bitcoin bond could end up tied to cotton futures. Okay. Now, if they do these bonds, though, make sure that we're using Bitcoin. Okay. So anyway, earlier this month, managing director of you know, the IMF called for caution. We talked about this on the channel um, regarding crypto assets, saying supervised testing would be preferable as a first step. Above all, we must keep an open mind about crypto assets and financial technology more broadly, not only because of the risk they pose, but also because of their potential to improve our lives. And also we had seen them, uh, remember there was a thing going around that they were creating their own cryptocurrency. Well, 
they did create their own cryptocurrency, but it doesn't actually have any value. I think they were calling it learning coin or something. And essentially they just want to experiment on it and just like, just experiment really with blockchain tech. They're not looking to use it as an actual currency. As far as I'm aware of, maybe down the line, they might change their mind. I don't know. But right now it's more or less just for experiments. Okay. But they're finding the interest and they're seeing the need to look deeper into it. Also, expanding into a lot more territories is Coinbase, actually, which is pretty crazy. Um, so look at all these different places now. Uh, customers in Argentina, Mexico, Peru, Colombia, Chile, India, Hong Kong, South Korea, Indonesia, the Philippines, and New Zealand can now sign up on Coinbase.com and download our iOS and Android app. So to any of my viewers from any of those places, congratulations. You guys can now officially join Coinbase. So yeah, there you go. Um, if you guys want, I do have a referral link below, which <laughs> I don't think anyone's used it in like over a year. But uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. So talking about um, this right here, we have blockchain is what students should study now. Um, talking about blockchain adoption, I think this is great. They're really pushing it in schools. I'm not going to get into this whole thing, but they talk about the importance of it and uh, you know why we need to start promoting blockchain technology in our schools and offering more courses, which actually we have seen a lot more courses being, you know, offered. So definitely a good thing moving forward, guys. I think that's a good note. I think that is a good note to leave today's video on. So yeah, that's it for me today, guys. I mean, it's Thursday, you know, not too much price action to talk about. You know, we've been kind of going sideways. I do think that there will be a big move. Um, you know, we are approaching the weekend. The weekend, we tend to see volume drop low. Sometimes we do have those bigger moves just because of the volatility, right? So we will keep an eye on it. Right now, it looks like Bitcoin's really not doing too much. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of TA channels out there you guys could check out. I'm, I'm not exactly like the biggest TA channel. I mean, I just really like to look at the charts and kind of see where we're at, guys. But you could definitely go find some other channels that do some crazy deep dives. Um, but yeah, I mean, we are going to keep our eyes on it. And I want to say thank you so much again for everyone that's been liking, subscribing, commenting. You guys rock. You're the reason that I do this every single day. I really appreciate it. Everyone that's just been stopping by, you know, literally just saying what up in the comments below, joining the Telegram. If you guys haven't, uh, here's the link right here for my Telegram group. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you guys anything. And uh, yeah, anybody that's been using the referral links, uh, you know, picking up some ledgers, downloading the Brave browser, uh, picking up some domains at Unstoppable Domains. Yeah, it's all good, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You are the freaking best. And I can't wait to see you tomorrow for another episode of Crypto Zombie. My name is K-Dub, and until then, until next time, stay crypto, and peace out.